Very good, very good. Welcome everyone to the Transport for New South Wales Parking Innovation Challenge Information Session Webinar. Thank you for all tuning in from wherever you now call the office. This is our very first information session where pyjamas are suitable attire uh, for the event and of course pants are entirely optional. So whatever you do, please do not ask me to stand up. I am the ISO version of Richard Tubb from the Transport for New South Wales Open Data and Innovation Team. In the spirit of reconciliation, Transport for New South Wales acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. I'd also like to welcome and thank the representatives from Waverley Council, Willoughby Council, City of Sydney, Canterbury Bankstown City and Penrith City Council for the support and attendance today. Firstly, some housekeeping matters. If you haven't done any before the session, you are more than welcome to use us uh, as an excuse to do some more after the session. Um, you can even put that in your calendar if you like to say that the webinar went over time. And in the event of emergency, we won't be able to hear any sirens or alarms. So please do uh, the best to describe your emergency through MIME as best you can. Today, you will have noticed that uh, you're all on mute. This wasn't an accident. We have had, had over 160 uh, registrations today and uh, we've got uh, um, currently 92 participants. So there might be a few more joining us uh, throughout, uh, throughout the webinar today. So, uh, and of course, things would get a little crowdy if we were able to, to hear from everyone. Uh, here is today's agenda. Uh, for the benefit of those uh, who are listening and, and don't have the video on today, uh, we'll be hearing from Yvonne Lee, Acting Director, Open Data and Innovation at Transport for New South Wales. Uh, and then the details of the Parking Innovation Challenge from Dylan King, Innovation Lead uh, in the Open Data and Innovation Team at Transport for New South Wales. And then we will be going on to our question and answer panel. Uh, and for those people uh, who would like to add their questions, you'll notice on the bottom uh, of the screen here, there is a Q&A button. Uh, please contribute your questions uh, by putting them into the, the Q&A uh, area there. And also, if you could please upvote uh, any of the ones you think are, are worthy of discussion. Uh, we may not get time to answer all the questions today, uh, but if we do miss any particularly good ones, we'll post the answers to those alongside the ones we have answered uh, today on the Innovation Challenge website. I'd like to introduce Yvonne Lee, Acting Director of the Open Data and Innovation Team, who will give you some background to the Open Data Program and the Innovation Challenge process. Yvonne. Hi. Um, so if you don't know about the Open Data um, Program and the Open Data Hub, um, we are very, very happy to say that we've had over 6.1 billion API hits as of um, early 2016, when we launched during the Future Transport um, Technology Summit that we held. Um, we've been supporters of the open data of open data generally um, from before that time around 2013 when we first started all our um, our public facing apps and we'll just go through some of the different programs that we've run in the recent times. So firstly the the open data policy stems from the GIPA Act. Um, the GIPA Act is also known as like the Freedom of Information Act you might not you might know of. Um, and uh, we, we, as a government agency, want to release our data as openly as possible, um, and we're compelled to do so. Um, so if there's data out there that you, as an innovator or a researcher, would like to see more of or see, um, feel free to reach out to the Open Data team, that's us, um, either through our website, opendata.transport.nsw.gov.au, and we've got a forum, we've got a Twitter handle, and all those details will be later in this slide pack. Um, but feel free to reach out to us. It is our friendly team that you can see on screen um, who will be facilitating getting that data out to you. So um, we also have an um, endorsed product program um, and to become one of these amazing endorsed um, products that we, we support, um, you need to come through an innovation challenge. We don't have any other pathway at this point in time to become an endorsed product. We get pitched all the time to become an endorsed product um, but you do need to come through an innovation challenge. And that's why we run these, um, these programs, the, um, car, the Car Parking Innovation Challenge today. And um, some of the previous ones we've had include, um, for example, Waverley Transport Innovation Challenge. Our great partners from Waverley Council are here today, um, also supporting this challenge, but um, we're currently in, um, at the early, early stages of incubating um, for the Waverley Transport Innovation Challenge. 
Um, we've also had a number of different innovation challenges, as you can see here, um, and there's more to come. So um, we'll just go through a couple of the, the amazing ones that we've had in the past. Um, so the Learner Driver Logbook one um, had three endorsed products at the, um, at the end of the program. And one of them, Round Trip, has logged over 1 million um, Learner Driver Logbook trips now. So that's been a really good success for them. The other one we wanted just to highlight is um, Decky, which is a voting companion app. Um, and the reason that we wanted to highlight this one, again, as you can see, it's a nice clean interface, um, something to help our voting for voting safety. But the amazing thing about Decky is that they've also sold their products into other jurisdictions uh, around Australia. Um, so that, there's many paths to commercialization and that's certainly an area that we look, um, look at during the um, submission process, which um, Dylan will walk us through. So I'll hand over to Dylan, um, who is uh, Dylan King, our innovation lead for the Parking Innovation Challenge. He'll just walk us through in a bit more detail about the challenge. Hey everyone, uh, thanks so much for making the time to come to the session today. So I'm gonna dig into the, kind of the nuts and bolts of the challenge, um, the customer problem, the challenge statements, and how you know, some of the things you might want to consider during the application process. This will lead in nicely to the Q&A session at the end. So firstly, what are we looking at? The customer problem is really focused on confusing parking signs. As you would know, especially in CBD areas, parking rules often change multiple times during the day and over the week. And this means that drivers can have trouble understanding restrictions when they park. This can lead to fines, confusion, and also increased congestion as people circle the streets looking for an appropriate path. So with your help, we're going to take a two-pronged approach to solve this customer problem. So first of all, and this is the first challenge statement, challenge statement number one, can you create a safe, frictionless digital solution for drivers to better understand information at their desired location and when planning a trip? So when we're talking about this, I'm just gonna break it down a little bit for you. So safe means it will comply with the road rules and will not distract the driver. Frictionless means that it will not distract the driver in a way that will cause them to have any unnecessary actions outside of driving. So have a really good think about that. And this is one of the key areas where the innovation part of this will come in and where we're looking to you for ideas. By digital, we mean that there will be no changes to existing parking signs, parking rules, or any physical curbside infrastructure. So this is gonna be a purely digital or virtual solution. It should give drivers accurate location-based and timely information at the point of parking. It can be used for trip planning before embarking on a drive um, as well. Uh, so, it's up to you, it doesn't have to do either or both, but we're really considering that if you can nail both of those things, that would be a really nice complete solution in our eyes. So we're basically looking, just to reiterate the key problem, looking to solve for when drivers get to a park, they have to get out, stick their head out of the window and check signage, and even at the point where they find the signage, may interpret incorrectly. So on to challenge statement number two. Can you effectively map or create a digital representation of on-street parking and traffic rules that can be published as open data? So in order to create high quality customer experiences, we'll need to provide accurate, relevant data based on the parking signs, road rules, and other relevant information about curbside. So as an example, as Yvonne mentioned earlier, Waverley Council has provided us with a great set of data which is now published on the Open Data Hub and that will become the focus for the trials in Challenge Statement 1. Um, as we've discovered in our research for this phase of the challenge, it's, you know, it's really high quality but in general in New South Wales there's no or very little other accurate on-street data available and publicly available. So that's really what we're trying to do with this second problem statement. So we're looking for a cost-effective method that will create and maintain accurate data related to all essential curbside information. And as a result, we would like to be able to publish this once again via open data. 
So this is the Innovation Challenge timeline. You might have seen registrations uh, open for this session on the 13th of May. Today is obviously the 20th. Um, the submission form opened at midday today and we're holding the session. So these submissions will close at midnight on the 3rd of June. So that's 11.59 p.m. on June 3. Once the submissions come in, we'll assess them and we'll shortlist. The shortlist will go to pitch day. So the pitch day will be hosted on the 17th of June. And at this stage, we are more than likely going to hold the pitch day on a video conference similar to this. That means that there'll be no travel required by proponents. So the organization or team or teams that do really well in the pitch day will enter an incubation phase. At that phase, they'll receive funding, they'll receive access to subject matter experts from transport, and we'll give them assistance in terms of creating that product or feature and getting it to launch. And the target date for the launch for this challenge is 30 September 2020. So if you cannot provide a solution to the public, if you can't launch a solution by that date, please don't enter the challenge. And also in the submission form, we'll be asking you to demonstrate how you'll be able to meet that target date. So now onto the judging criteria. Number one, customer experience and usability. Is the solution appealing, effortless, intuitive, and easy to use? Market feasibility. How well do you understand the customer? What benefits will they derive from the solution? And how likely are they to use it? Innovation. Is the product unique and original? And does it demonstrate tangible technical innovations? Commercial sustainability. Can the idea sustain its commercial momentum? Is it likely to be profitable in the long term? And finally, technical feasibility. This is about whether the team can deliver the solution. Can they demonstrate an understanding of technical inputs to solution development and ensure ongoing technical stability of the product or solution? So as a final note, a frequently asked question that we get is, what seed funding is on offer for this particular challenge is up to $30,000 plus GST per proponent. So with all that said, I hope you all took notes and you're ready for a Q&A session. I'm going to hand back to Richard to run the Q&A. Richard. Thank you very much uh, for that, Dylan. Yes, off to our uh, Q&A session. I'd like to uh, introduce our Q&A panel. Gordon Farrelly, Traffic and Transport Team Leader from Willoughby Council. Leo Huetes, Strategic Transport Project Manager from Waverley Council. Peter Boland, Project and Risk Manager, Safety, Environment and Regulation from Transport for New South Wales. David Phillips, Open Data Enablement Lead from Transport for New South Wales. That's where I hadn't said that like a hundred times before. Yvonne Lee, Acting Director, Open Data and Innovation, Transport for New South Wales. And of course, Dylan King, Innovation Lead, Open Data and Innovation for Transport for New South Wales. Now, for those people who haven't added their question, uh, please feel free to add it on the Q&A button down the bottom there, and you can upvote uh, any questions as well. We've got a couple there, which is great. Uh, we also have um, some questions that have been posed uh, to us um, as well, so we will answer um, those uh, in, in due course as well. So I will uh, kick it off uh, with the first question, and I'll just make sure, just before I actually start, I'll just make sure that we've got um, all our Q and A panel on board and that they're able uh, to speak. So I just, I know that I've just, uh, I know Leo is there. We can just check to make sure Leo has video or at least audio. Hi everyone. Yeah, I can hear you really well. Excellent, excellent. I can uh, hear and see you, Leo, which is great. Uh, Gordon, is Gordon, uh, was Gordon here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you, Gordon. Yes, can't see you, but can hear you nice and clear. Uh, Peter Boland? No? He's, uh, he's probably on long lunch, maybe. Okay, <laughs> no worries. And we know David, Yvonne, and Dylan are here. Well, if Peter Boland does jump in, uh, we'll make sure that um, uh, we can, uh, he's able to answer any of your questions. Okay, so I'll just uh, tackle a few of the uh, the questions that we have uh, um, initially, which is the first one is, what is the state of parking data in Waverley Council? Probably one for you there, Leo. Okay, hello everyone. Um, so 
Um, pretty much at uh, Waverly Council, we feel uh, very happy that we have managed to gather some data in general of our assets. So this comes from, this is an exercise that's been happening for around 10 years. So this is not something that was just acquired because we thought we needed the data. It's mostly because of three factors, uh, maintenance, accounting for assets, and financial reporting. So pretty much uh, the, the reason why we have counted all our parking signs and have a proper understanding is because of those three, um, the, the three aspects. Um, the, the fact is that on our asset management plan, we have the idea of keeping track of all our accounts. And for example, in our, every time on our traffic committee, uh, we need to change signs or we need to do something about parking. When those changes are approved, our data team actually updates our database. So that's, that's what has been happening and that's what's made our parking data available for everyone. So uh, we, we do know where our assets are. We, we have mapped them and we've actually shared them with Transport for New South Wales and um, we'll be very happy for anyone to use them. Waverly Council is of the view of sharing data with the community so we can get a better result for everyone. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Probably one of the other questions that people uh, would like to hear answered following on from um, um, from what's happening on the Waverley Council side of things is what is the state of parking data in Willoughby? Um, so, Gordon, would you like to, to help us out there with that one? Yeah, sure. So, we've just uh, focused our attention on our Chatswood Central Business District and we've um, got some support from a private sector company to actually do a video, oh, sorry, a digital uh, mapping of uh, the parking restrictions in, a, in the CBD. It's only a fairly tight geographical area. Um, and that's actually provided in a sort of a, an app and through our website. Uh, and we've, we've also provided that to Transport for New South Wales. Uh, there's no other data available um, for areas outside of the Chatswood CBD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Gordon. Uh, the next question that we do have here is from Anthony Goodacre. Um, and this is, will this be linked to the state government's Park and Pay app? I'll throw that out to the panel. Um, I'll, I'll take that um, question. So the Park and Pay app is run by, um, really by the Department of Customer Service. I know that um, a couple of participants from the Department of Customer Service are on the, um, on the Zoom call at the moment, on the Zoom webinar. Um, but the data from Open Data will be ingested, if it's appropriate, into any of these apps. So for example, we already have a, um, Park and Ride, which are our commuter car park um, APIs. We have that out, out on Open Data, and that data is being ingested into the Park and Pay app. Um, so certainly if there's any data to be had um, that is suitable, I'm sure that the Park and Pay app um, will be ingesting that in. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much uh, for that, Yvonne. Uh, another question we have here is, uh, where can I access the data uh, from the challenge? Dave, would you like to handle that one? Yeah, you go to opendata.transport.nsw.gov.au, where the <laughs> Open Data Hub is, and you can do a search on there for parking. Um, but I'll give you a few uh, highlights. As uh, Leo and Gordon have said, uh, Leo's uh, Waverly data is all there, comprehensive shapefiles. And um, Gordon's uh, data as well is just pending some private final approvals before we publish it. Um, but it's basically all set up and ready to go for this challenge. Um, and you can also find other links through to uh, relevant parking data from City of Sydney Council. They've got a great data hub um, showing parking meters um, as well as uh, rates and hours of operation and so on. Um, so yeah, get on over to the Open Data Hub. Very good, thank you very much uh, for that Dave. 
Uh, next question is from Jack Fay. Is there a process for approaching partners that might complement our skills? Yeah. I, Dylan or Yvonne? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can, take, I can take that one, Yvonne. Um, in the past, we've held some collaboration sessions for these types of challenges. With the current environment, um, that it, it's going to be a real challenge for us to do that. So we haven't planned anything along those lines for this particular challenge. I'll just add to that. Um, certainly, we do encourage you to um, to partner with other people should you so wish. Um, but yeah, as Dylan was mentioning, is that we don't have the ability to facilitate that. And if you've ever worked with government in the past, it's not something that is commonly done um, in terms of facilitation of partnerships beyond just putting people in a room together. Um, it's yeah, just government policy. We, we don't tend to um, do warm introductions as such. Thank you very much for that. Uh, also for uh, everyone who uh, can see the questions and answers, not answers, the questions <laughs> um, down the bottom there, uh, please uh, please continue to upvote those ones too um, that you would like to, to hear from. We'd like to get through all of them, but they might, we, may, we may not be able to. Uh, our next question uh, is, does the solution need to consider only on street, in other words, curbside parking, or should it include off street parking as well? Maybe one for you, Dave. Uh, it doesn't need to, but it can. Um, it's not a must have, um, but you absolutely can check out the off street parking data that we have on the Open Data Hub. As Yvonne mentioned, the API, which gives real time information for four park and ride uh, Opal car parks, which are Ashfield, Cogra, Seven Hills, and Manly Vale park and ride car park, um, as well as we have off street parking for the Sydney CBD as well, which is a static data set, which we're in the process of getting uh, fresh up-to-date data for that one as well. Yeah, so I'd, I'd probably just reiterate that the focus and the unique part of this is that the data that we've been provided by Waverley and Willoughby is the first open data set we've got for on street, so I'm really looking to test that out. But of course, beyond that, if you can also include off-street data in your solution, you'll get bonus points. Very good, thank you very much. Next one is from Kenav uh, Batra, and uh, their question is, this, is this challenge uh, just focused on explaining parking regulations or, or can we provide the solution for real-time parking occupancy? Yeah, I'll take that one as well. Um, the, initially, what we're looking to do is feed the information for what is just represented on the street, but that if you're able to provide a real-time solution, I'm more than happy to hear innovative solutions for that. Um, one of the reasons we haven't put that forward specifically is that we don't have access currently to real-time location data on the Open Data Hub. So please feel free to, to include that in your pitch. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, another question, uh, does this also include special events parking? It could. It's something uh, we uh, are definitely pursuing is getting more information about special event parking. Um, so potentially, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Dave. Uh, and this is from anonymous attendee. Um, that's fine. Anonymous questions are, are welcome as well. Uh, is the product for parking all around New South Wales or for a particular area? So I'll take that one. So ideally, we'd like to see a solution that is scalable that can be rolled out throughout New South Wales. The reason that we've focused on Waverley and Willoughby at this stage is they're the two areas that we know that we've got high quality data and that is, has been published on the Open Data Hub. So we're looking for you know, definitely a proof of concept or you know, the first initial piece to look at those two areas. If you have the ability to provide a solution that's statewide, that would be fantastic. Um, but from our perspective, that's you know part of the process and probably what more of what you see in challenge statement too is us trying to get our heads around what is the best way to collect more of that data, have it really accurate and up to date, and be able to make it available to the public. 
Thanks, Dylan. Uh, now on to the next one. Clearways with parking limits are either metered um, and non-metered. Is that going to be included? Well, we do have uh, Clearways data set from RMS uh, published on the Open Data Head, so uh, Open Data Hub. So absolutely, that can be included. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, and uh, next one is: um, Will there be a way that local government associations that have mapped curb sides to incorporate that data into a solution via a two-way API? Randwick are about to map curb sides in the study area. Uh, also to support special events, temporary regulation and work zones where council can push out these to all providers. Who would like to grab that one? Yeah, well, any, any data like that that's available, I'd encourage the owners of that to get in touch with us. So either with myself or with Dave Phillips that you can see here, um, you can connect with us at our program email, which is open data program transport.nmsw.gov.au or you can put a request in or a question on the open data forum as well. Thank you. Uh, nice easy one here for you Dylan. Uh, does the solution need to meet the two challenge statements? So not necessarily. They're mutually exclusive. So you can have one, you can have two or you can have both together. So we're looking for innovation in both a customer solution and in a digital mapping, virtualization or datafication of the curbside solution. Either or, or both. Very good, very good. Uh, another uh, good question here um, is what happens to the IP, of course, intellectual property, uh, which has been developed uh, during the innovation challenge? Is it for Transport for New South Wales? Um, with all our third party apps that get developed in these challenges, um, they are the IP of the original proponents, unless they want to do something outside of that. Um, but we do not own the IP. It is pure seed funding, um, if we are to fund it. It is to that. Um, the incubation, I'm not sure we, we talked about incubation but too much, but our incubation process, a lot of it is to do with our, um, our you know, uh, government um, restrictions on what we will and won't endorse. Um, so we will provide guidance and co-design um, feedback um, to to any um, developers that work with us, um, but the IP is owned and um, and run by the the participants and teams themselves. Thanks, Yvonne. Uh, our next question, uh, also from Anthony, is if we if linking to the park if linking to park and pay, we would like it uh, as an open API as we use Paystay, which is a D which is DCA's platform. Someone familiar with all those things can answer that. <laughs> um, we will contact our lovely friends over at um, Department of Customer Service to, to request if that can be made open as, as an open API. However, at this point, it is not. It is only available to the park and pay. No worries. Uh, and another question here, an easy one. Uh, is there a guarantee of a contract with Transport for New South Wales if the successful organisation slash consortium wins the innovation challenge? One uh, either for Yvonne. Yeah, yep. Um, so uh, no. <laughs> the oh, other is, um, we, yeah, as part of the submission, um, there is a question about how are you going to make it commercially sustainable. Um, that's for you to answer. If we are to be the customer, you need to make that very, very clear, and that will be taken into account. But um, we, with all our products, we would prefer not to be the customer because we don't want to have that um, your reliance on us. Um, we want to make, find an innovation challenge, like an innovation product that will support you commercially and support our needs and our customer needs. Um, so it's a win-win-win situation. Thank you. Uh, one from uh, Patrick uh, Lavery. How would you see a solution developed through this challenge competing with or complementing park and pay? Would you expect users in New South Wales to have two parking information apps? From what we've heard, the ambition with park and pay is to provide parking information across uh, New South Wales. Yep. Uh, do you, uh, right, um, yep. <laughs> so, um, yep. So um, it's not necessarily a competitor to, but there are two different, like it's a different use case. Um, if Park and Pay is going to provide all of that, um, you know, data, we are wanting the data to go out on the open data and so that Park and Pay can also facilitate that information. 
Um, but our main objective is to, and there's two obviously, but the main objective is to provide a much better um, informational capability to customers so they don't have to lean out their window on a dark rainy night to find out whether or not they need, they can or can't park in that spot that they can see. So that is the main objective. Um, how we do it is, that's why we're running an innovation challenge. Thank you, thank you Yvonne. Uh, our next uh, question is an anonymous one. That's a triple barreled question, so uh, pre prepared for it. So the first is about users. Uh, have you done any research about the users so far? If so, what have you found? Or what would you make, uh, or what would make the solutions a success from the point of view of a user? We'll do that one first. So, to the extent that we've done research, we understand the user behavior of all drivers. So. The target market might be different for each different product and we're open to hearing who that might be from you. And we would expect the organization when they pitch to, it was one of the judging criteria for our market feasibility to do their own market feasibility research and to have a really good understanding of their particular target market. We understand that there could be multiple different target markets for this type of solution, whether it be rideshare, taxi, private driver, um, you know, people who are doing freight, people doing last mile delivery, people who are providing waste management. So there's a range of different um, organizations and types of drivers out there. Um, we haven't covered all of those extensively in our research, but we are expecting that to be well articulated in your submission. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, scenarios? Um, if, I, if I can, yeah, if I can add a little bit on the, on the read of local government, so we, in Waverly specifically, we are a very, very busy urban center. And uh, we know that uh, traffic and parking is maybe the, the, are both the, the most difficult things to deal with and what people really care about uh, in our area. So we've tried to come with solutions for parking for residents, but then there is traffic as well. And we have our residential parking permit scheme where we pretty much know how many spaces we have on street against how many cars are registered. And um, a lot of these uh, areas are pretty much full. So uh, any solution that help us, helps us uh, organize parking will, will, will be welcome. And uh, we, we do know, we don't have the exact numbers, but we do know that even though we don't have as many cars as the average Sydney, we are uh, having, having issues. And now in the future, after we come out of all, of all this COVID-19 issue, there are, there are two ways of saying it. Is it going to be even worse or are we gonna get better anyway? Cool, um, thank you very much for that, Leo. Uh, this, uh, on the second part of this triple barrel question, I'll, um, this is also probably for, for you, Leo, Leo, and for Gordon. Um, under scenarios, are there any particular example problems that the councils are wanting to fix for users? For example, Saturdays in a particular area. I might just go to Gordon first and then probably back to Leo. Uh. Look, we suffer the same range of problems as any other council. So I think most of these problems that I explain are generic. So there is the weekday sort of congestion uh, that would desirably be uh, uh, reduced by this parking app, we would hope, uh, through at least uh, reducing circulation of traffic, trying to find parking spaces. Um, we have the, in our CBD, we've got a, um, an environment that changes over time. So uh, in the morning, it's, uh, it's more journey to work type of uh, activities. Then during the day, it's uh, around services and retail. And then in the evening, we have uh, more around cultural and um, recreation and um, sort of food-based sort of demands. So it's trying to support all of those different demands. Then on the weekends, uh, uh, to some degree, it's the same sort of problems. Um, and um, I think the main one is that uh, we're trying to support customers uh, that wish to drive. Uh, we obviously promote other modes like public transport and active transport as our principal access types of modes. But if people wish to drive, 
then uh, they're given a, um, as stress-free a uh, journey experience as possible uh, without guaranteeing that even though there is data or information saying there's parking available here, there may not be because at this stage we're not saying it's a real-time app as I understand it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Did you want to add to that? So uh, from Waverly side, um, first you guys, whoever is not familiar with Waverly, we are uh, we are in the area where Bondi Beach is, and uh, we are a very seasonal uh, LGA. So on summer days, on a Saturday, we could receive 80,000 visitors, which means that our needs, even though Bondi Beach can be called a commercial center, we don't really have many parking buildings, and not that we want to have them because of the accessibility because our roads are not wide enough and they're not going to be wider at all. So I think that um, it, the specific case for us would be, even though we don't have real time information yet, and we don't, we don't know when that's going to happen, it would be great for any solution to actually help us understand and kind of foresee what's going to happen. So say, for example, that if you have how much parking around, but then you get there and there is no parking, some way of reporting. So through time, all this data thing is for, for, for future proving as well and for future planning. So anything that can actually report on how it was and how it's likely to be, depending on weather or season, it will be great. Thank you, thank you, Leo. And the third part of this uh, quite long question is co comparative analysis. Are there any existing solutions or inspiration from other jurisdictions uh, in Australia and around the world uh, that we particularly like? Dylan, I'll, do you want I'll, to... I'll take this one. So we've done a, a bunch of research globally around this. Um, there are a number of different organisations that uh, provide various different solutions, which look great. I, we wouldn't want to kind of direct people to a particular solution. Um, one of the reasons we have these innovation challenges and like to test and learn through these is that we want to actually take it back to fundamentals and give people that customer problem and that challenge statement. And we really want to hear new, fresh, innovative ideas out there from the market you know, from, you know, innovators in New South Wales, but also from people globally. And rather than leading that and kind of confining the thinking, we would prefer not to, not to do that and just ask you to go back to first principles and try and be as innovative as possible whilst also answering the challenge statements and kind of solving that customer problem. I know that's kind of a non-answer answer, but that's the way we like to approach these innovation challenges. Can I just add to it, and only, only really to, um, to br also bring Peter, who's also one of our panelists into this conversation, um, is just really around the frictionless as well. Like, so whilst we, we know there's multiple numbers of products out there, one of the main drivers of this is making it as frictionless and safe for the driver as possible. So I'm not sure, Peter, if, um, if you have uh, some, some words of wisdom that you can share around that. Yeah, thanks, Yvonne Lee. Uh, firstly, apologies. I was having my own innovation challenge, Dylan, trying to connect to this forum. Um, the password uh, was being rejected every time I tried. So I did miss the start. Um, I actually was hoping... Thank you. I was actually hoping um, some of the questions coming from the, from the um, forum would have given me a better idea, a better picture of what you envisage the product to look like, because in my mind, I'm still asking... Is it providing route guidance? Is it, a, um, is it a navigation app? Or is it simply information only once the driver has stopped? So uh, if I can put on my road safety hat, I'd just like to say, having our experience with our apps and our HMI studies and research, we want to minimize disruption and distraction to the driver as much as possible. So whether the passenger can take on the task of reading the information, um, or whether it's the onus is on the driver to to um, pull over, read, or re or or, or di digest some um, alert that pops up in real time, that would be a concern. 
as they're trying to navigate these narrow streets, watching their rear view mirror, looking for a bay. Just like now, if something pops up on my phone, grabs my attention. So is that a realistic um, a risk to the product? Um, but if it's information only, um, I would look forward to something where the driver can pull over and access and read at their leisure. Does that make sense? That's great. That's great. Yeah. Great, great to have you, Peter. Thanks. Great to hear about the safety considerations too, which was one of the questions that we have here for, uh, for you. So uh, great that, you, that you're on here with us. Uh, thank you. Was there any other, Yvonne, did you want to say anything further to that? On that one? No, I, I really just said, uh, wanted um, Peter's um, insight <laughs> no, the side of things because I think uh, I know that we've talked about it, but just based on the questions that we're receiving, I just wanted to re-emphasize that is a major component of this innovation challenge is that we do definitely want to make sure it's as safe as possible. Um, I know everybody in their heads thinking an app, and we've been told from you know like when we were planning out this innovation challenge, we don't want another app, but you know obviously it may have to be an app-like thing. Um, so put your thinking caps on. We want you to innovate, but safely. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you. And also, uh, don't forget to upvote uh, any of the questions there. So we've currently got 15 open. We've only got uh, 14 minutes to go. So likely we probably won't get through all of them. Um, so I'm going to on to this uh, next one from Angelique. Uh, do you have a current register of the signage as it currently exists? Uh, either data or uh, data. <laughs> David or Yvonne, did you want to? Well, that's the, the data we have currently on the Open Data Hub. Definitely for Waverley, there's good information on, on what parking sign exists. And uh, we are in the process of publishing that from Willoughby, at least for the uh, Chatswood CBD area. Um, but, uh, and those are kind of the focus of the areas we're looking at initially. And hopefully we can get more data out of more councils uh, as we go down the track to get a comprehensive look uh, across New South Wales. Thanks, Dave. Uh, next question is from Voon Lee, who's also giving a hello over to Yvonne. Uh, is the June deadline uh, pitch needed to involve a proof of concept uh, implementation or more of a business case? Uh, Dylan, did you want to answer that one? Yeah, I'll take that one. So we're not, it, this would be, you know, the pitch something to let us understand what the solution would look like. It doesn't necessarily have to be developed, you know, I'd imagine wireframes or something like that might be handy. Um, the only thing that we're concerned about is whether that solution can be delivered by the release date, which is 30 September 2020. So it doesn't have to be built now, um, we, but you will have to kind of give us confidence that you'll be able to produce it and release it to the public by the 30 September date. Very good. Thank you very much uh, for that. Dylan, uh, have customers indicated a willingness to pay for such apps or is this considered to be a, uh, as a government funded service? You know? uh, yep, um, so it's an innovation challenge. Part of the submission is you tell us the commercial, um, the commercial business model that you have. Um, so there could be a willingness to pay, but it's research that you as, um, as a startup would, would need to do. And I'd probably add that out there in the market, if you do a bit of research, you'll find a number of different business models, whether they be business to business, business to consumer, business to government, um, different to business to different levels of government. It's, it's really up to you and you can be innovative and creative about that, but you can also kind of look at what's out in the market and see what model might best fit your organization and your solution um, and go from there. Thank you. Our next question is from Anthony Goodacre, who asks, is there an expectation that in-ground sensors will be used? As this is the most, uh, is this what most current participants in the market need for quality data? So I'll take that one. Um, and this probably goes back to the description of challenge statement number two. Uh, well, it's also relevant to number one, but really, what we want to do is try and achieve this in a purely digital or virtual manner. Yes, if you, if, if part of your solution is to do that, um, you can pitch it, but the reality is, is that the focus of this is to not touch the physical infrastructure, not change any signs or road rules or touch the curbside. It's the priority is on purely digital, purely virtual solutions. Still, 
Uh, this is from uh, Canav Batra. Uh, have the councils or transport for New South Wales already tried anything for this problem? Uh, if so, what did, didn't work? Do we love about it? You want, I see you shaking your head. Did you want to quickly jump in before? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, no, we haven't, not that I know of. I'm looking at the faces on the panel, but uh, <laughs> we've tried anything as such, which is why we are very keen to see your submissions. Excellent. Did anyone else want to add anything from the panel? Very good. Um, some simple ones here. Any restrictions on who can enter? Uh, international participants or a Transport for New South Wales employee? I might take that one only because the, 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 two, the two separate questions. International participants, please do um, participate. The great thing is the pitch day will be, most likely, as Dylan said, will be um, via video um, conferencing type technology. So do participate. But if you are a Transport for New South Wales um, employee or if you're associated with one of the councils too closely, um, we are unlikely to be able to do anything with you too closely. Like we'd want to work with you, but we probably will not be able to do any seed planning. We probably will not be able to endorse just from probity reasons. Um, feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to discuss that. Um, but at this point, I would suggest that um, uh, no <laughs> is the answer. Very good, thank you. Uh, our next question is from Sunda from the License Ready app. Uh, hi, Sunda. Uh, how many solutions will be accepted? So I'll take that one. So we haven't determined that yet, um, but you know we would we're we're open to more than one, but we are not really going to put a particular restriction on whether it's one or more. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll answer this one too. Uh, next one is from Kieran. Uh, does the solution need um, to allow, oh, sorry, it's just jumped for me. <laughs> uh, need to allow to connect to paid parking providers, for example, Wilson Parking, if they have an API. Uh, is that a Dave question? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll no. go for it, Dave. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> go for it. Uh, Ken, if you want, we don't have uh, parking data for Wilson's car parks, only our private, uh, sorry, our park and rate local car parks. Um, so if, if it's possible to do and you have an innovative idea, then you can throw it out to us. And I, I'd probably on that, please feel free to add that, but you know, as a focus, we're really trying to focus on the on-street parking for this particular challenge. Um, the majority of commercial car parks, like the one in question, um, those providers are generally off street providers. Very good. Thank you. And uh, keep those upvotes uh, happening as well. Uh, we do have limited time. We've got 10 here. We'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, are the councils looking at digital signage? This is from uh, Mostyn Howell. Dylan, that's probably a quick one for you. So in, in the case yeah. of Waverly, we we're not. Uh, that, that's pretty much it. We do have some smart signs connected to our three car parks in the buildings that actually tell you um, occupancy on the street on Hollywood Avenue, but we're not looking for, for signs at the moment. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Leo. Um, there's a question here about who is the context for this particular challenge that's um, definitely us uh, in terms of transport for New South Wales. If you go to the, uh, the challenge page, you will find the information uh, there for that particular one. Um, and sorry, I'll just jump in. We're also sorry. going to be uh, publishing a PDF version of this presentation. And at the back of the presentation, we'll have all the key contact information. You can also find that on website as Richard said. Excellent. Another quick one here from Jack Fay. Uh, does the challenge extend to the redesign of physical environment, i.e. non-app based solutions? No, it does not. Um, it does go beyond app based solutions, absolutely, but we're focusing on digital solutions rather than infrastructure solutions. Thank you. Uh, another question about how many applicants, which we've, um, I think that we have uh, answered uh, that one previously. Um, the next one is the issue from Stuart. The issue that comes to mind is how can a road user depend on the legality of the information provided by the Apple service? And how can the Apple service protect itself from providing uh, inaccurate information? An example here is if the app recommends parking somewhere currently on a, a clear way. I'll throw that out to the panel to 
who would like to answer that? I think Peter, ready? <laughs> <laughs> From a um, from enforcement perspective, the aluminium sign face takes precedence. I assume there would be some very clearly written um, um, terms and conditions which would outline um, that this is probably a guide only and that for enforcement purposes, the sign would take precedence. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Peter. Just uh, going through. Uh, um, Another small questions. Uh, can we strap on standalone devices to poles to gather additional data to power the solution? I think it's probably been answered a few times in terms of it's not a physical, uh, we're not looking for any sort of physical infrastructure. So any sort of physical infrastructure questions, the answer will be, uh, will be no uh, with those ones. Uh, Although if they choose, if you want to do it yourself on your own, um, your own, in your own premises, you could, but keep in mind that premise, like that curbside doesn't belong to you. Um, so it's unlikely to happen. Yeah, I mean, it, that kind of thing would create a lot of complexity in terms of having to create best boat deals with the councils that you are operating within the LGA. So once again, the focus is not on any physical infrastructure, but rather on digital. Uh, I apologise if we've already uh, had this one before, but how many applicants would be shortlisted for the pitch day? Did we get that answered or? or not? There's no limit. We would usually have up to 10. Um, but if we have, you know, many, many good ideas, we'll listen to all of them. Uh, Peter, this is actually probably one for you here. Uh, has there been any study into the distraction to drivers involved at looking at parking signs as they exist today and whether a simplified safe application would be less likely to be dangerous? I'm not aware of any uh, specific parking digital solutions, any research in that area, but there certainly has been a lot of work done in general of driver distraction. Um, I touched on earlier with our app, the Speed Advisor app, we um, engaged a, um, an outside body to undertake further research on the HMI solution for us. Um, what, what would be encouraged, how much information should we include in that app, just to minimise that. Again, if it's a solution whereby the user can just read by the curbside, the vehicle is stationary, that's fine. If it's to be used in real time, there would be, um, we would, uh, would expect an absolute minimum of amount of information and distraction. But in terms of research specifically for this solution, no, I'm not aware of it. Excellent. Thank you, Peter. Um, we've got four more questions to go. We'll see if we can get it in three minutes. <laughs> so uh, we've got uh, Jack, one from, another one from Jack Fay. Um, are there transport from South Wales digital guidelines available for uh, UX, UI usability? There are guidelines around digital New South Wales. If you go to, I think it is digital.nsw.gov.au, I think it's something like that. Um, there are those sort of guidelines, um, but we at Transport for New South Wales don't have anything particular um, other than that. So I'd probably suggest the accessibility in the WCAG is something that if you're designing, you should look at. Very good, thank you. Just another quick one. Will you, will, sorry, would you be co-selling this app? Uh, I don't know what you mean, but um, we will, if we're, it's an endorsed product, we, we market the product to some extent, um, but um, we don't have any um, IP rights to it. So no, is the answer to that part of the question. Also, wouldn't imagine would be selling the app. Either. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we've got uh, a few more here. Uh, next one is uh, inspirations globally. globally. It'd be great if you could uh, share them. Is there any uh, particular research um, or any particular product or solution that uh, has come up that is inspiring for this particular um, challenge? Yeah, I think we kind of covered that one previously. Oh, so. Um, of course, yes, there are a ton of interesting products and solutions out there globally. There are a ton of interesting ones in Australia in the market here right now. Um, for the purposes of, for our purposes in this innovation challenge, we really would ask um, applicants to go back to first principles, um, do their own research and really focus on innovation and focus on answering those customer problems and those challenge statements that we've put forward. Um, we don't want to lead anyone down a particular route of what we might think is a solution um, it would kind of defeat the purpose of 
having an innovation challenge with this structure. We've got two questions, but I'll just take one more there, uh, which is uh, how is this supposed to reduce uh, sign clutter? So I can take that one as well. Um, it's not going to reduce sign clutter. So as part of the road rules, you know, for a particular site, for a particular parking restriction, you need to show a particular sign. Um, there's going to be no changes to those parking rules. So the actual signage, we have no control over or we won't change. One of the reasons we're looking for a digital solution to deliver that information is because, um, yeah, I mean, it would, it would overcome sign clutter with the digital, with digital information, if that makes sense. So it's probably a bit of a rambling answer, but yeah, no changes to the physical signage. Thank you, Dylan. And we've got a few more questions. We won't be won't have time to go to those. Um, if there's any there that stand out, we'll definitely put the answers uh, on those on the Innovation Challenge page. So thank you, everyone, uh, for all those great questions. It's great to have uh, to have filled that uh, block of time. And thank you very much uh, for our panelists uh, for joining us today. Um, don't forget uh, the key dates and times, which is uh, submissions close at 11:59 p.m on Wednesday the 3rd of June, which means anything on uh, Thursday the 4th of June is out. Uh, so just uh, keep that in mind when you are submitting and everything is timestamped. So uh, just uh, make sure you get in by that. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at datatfnsw. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, uh, email us opendataprogram at transport.nsw.gov.au. Um, and if you wanted to use the hashtag on Twitter, it's uh, NSW Parking Challenge. So maybe for those people who wanted to, to hook up with other participants or potentially, um, you might like to, to do that. And uh, obviously our, um, our website um, is there for you at opendata.transport.nsw.gov.au. Thank you very much for joining us to, today. It's uh, great to see such a huge amount of people that, uh, that attended. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing some really impressive submissions. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your house, housekeeping. Thank you.